this is very common, much more common than people realize, up to 10% of the adult population and as much as 2% of the pediatric population. However, in the adult population, less than a third have it severe enough that they need treatment. But that still represents about 2% of the population who have restless legs uh, and are being affected by it and really uh, should have a medical treatment for this disorder. Now, as far as uh, what it is, it's a neurologic disorder that presents with both sensory and motor features. We believe it is generated somewhere in the brain. And typically, uh, it just causes these very hard to describe, super annoying symptoms that start in the legs, but then can spread anywhere in the body. Uh, the only way the patient can get relief is to move the affected limb, uh, rub it, or get up and walk. There has to be some type of motion movement involved, or else uh, it's really uh, can be quite terrible. Uh, and to give you a little appreciation, if most of us have had some issues with insomnia, uh, you may be stressed or there's noise in the room next door in your hotel and you can't sleep, we can lie in bed, read a book, watch TV, pass away the time at least, but these restless leg patients, they can't do it. They have to get up and walk, sometimes for hours. And this is night after night of both sleep deprivation and having to keep moving. So uh, this can be such a terrible uh, disorder. Well, this is completely diagnosed by the clinical features and asking the patients the correct questions. A sleep study is typically not necessary unless you're concerned about another sleep disorder such as sleep apnea. And you just simply ask them, uh, starting with the, the first criterion, which is, uh, is there an unpleasant sensation uh, associated with an urge to move? Then it occurs at rest and it gets better with movement and it typically follows the circadian rhythm occurring at night, although when it gets bad, it can be around the clock. And we have a fifth criterion where we want to rule out mimics because we don't want to overdiagnose it. So if someone is a foot tapper and looks like they're moving their uh, feet all the time, uh, it may be due to restless legs, but it may just be that uh, they have a little nervous habit. If it's very mild, it can often be managed by very conservative, simple things like increase exercise, avoid triggers, which include many medications such as antihistamines, antidepressants, a uh, whole host of medications that can worsen it, uh, making sure your iron levels are adequate, uh, perhaps avoiding caffeine, that's not quite as certain. Uh, that's for the more mild cases that are usually intermittent and not as bothersome. But once it becomes close to daily and much more bothersome, these patients will need some type of intervention, which these days includes mostly medication treatment. Now, our biggest challenge is that many years ago, uh, when we didn't know any better, we got the dopamine agonist drugs approved. And although they work really, really well, initially, with time, they make the restless legs markedly worse. And I would say at least 80% of the consults I get and other national restless leg experts uh, are patients who've had dopaminergic augmentation or worsening of their restless legs from being on uh, medication. Uh, the dopamine agonists, and these are the toughest patients to treat. The other issue we have is sometimes recognition. Uh, patients, especially when they have mild, maybe early moderate disease, uh, sometimes they think that everybody has this and they're not really sure that this is a disorder, although we're getting better because it's been publicized a lot more since we've had uh, FDA-approved medications. But diagnosing them sometimes can be a little difficult. Uh, they often aren't forthcoming because, again, they may think this is just something that everyone has. Well, the first thing that is different than previously is 
the group of drugs we call alpha-2 delta drugs, which comprise horizont, uh, gabapentin, and pregabalin, are now uh, the ones that are strongly recommended and first-line therapy. But the other much more important, in my mind, and bigger recommendation is a recommendation against using the dopamine agonist drugs. The biggest problem we see with restless legs uh, is the use of these dopamine drugs, which by the way, still uh, recently represents about 60% of new prescriptions for new patients with diagnosed restless legs. Uh, they work great initially, but we know now, based on several studies, probably an average of seven to eight percent of those patients each year will develop a worsening of restless legs called augmentation. And usually within a few years, it's so bad uh, that the, the best and only thing you can do to make them better often is to get them off the medication, which can be very difficult. Uh, they looked at uh, the three alpha-2 delta drugs, uh, which include the horizon gabapentin and carbol, regular gabapentin, used to be called Neurontin, and pregabalin, which is Lyrica. And the only one that helped, at least according to the studies, uh, all three uh, domains, both sleep, restless legs, and quality of life, uh, was the horizon. Uh, now, I can't say for sure that the other ones may not do that. It just, we don't have enough studies uh, with them. Uh, but the horizon has some unique features compared to the shorter acting pregabalin and uh, gabapentin that I think make it uh, often a better choice because you typically only have to give one dose. It's a longer acting medication. Uh, and it provides very good levels, uh, blood levels, especially compared to gabapentin, which as you go up on the dosage, doesn't get very well absorbed. Uh, so uh, again, we have enough research and both experience uh, over the years uh, that this has been proven to be a very good medication that really treats restless leg symptoms very well, uh, quality of life is better, and uh, since it is sedating also, it does uh, very often help sleep, which is an issue we see a lot with restless leg patients. And there's kind of an, another interesting aspect here. Uh, when we first started treating the restless leg patients and we get rid of their uh, restless leg symptoms, we said, oh, they must be able to sleep better now because they're not being bothered by these really horrible restless leg symptoms that make them get up and move and walk and do things like that. And we found that a pretty high percentage of patients still had insomnia. The other thing that we saw is given the amount of insomnia that they had uh, compared to patients with just regular insomnia, they were not as sleepy in the daytime and they seemed to have more hyper arousal as a result of something. And the group at John Hopkins found that they had high glutamate levels which tend to cause this hyperarousal insomnia issue. And what's interesting is the alpha-2 delta drugs decrease glutamate levels and therefore kind of directly help uh, the insomnia that you see with restless leg patients, even when their restless leg symptoms are controlled. 